I am super excited today for project day. We are working at my house and we are doing some really fun trim work in our front family room or like our living room area. Also our dining room area where we just recently did some built-ins. So Mallory's on our way over. We have our project day outfits on and we are ready to go. Every time we come into Home Depot on project day, I feel like deja vu. We are at the Home Depot. So we're at Home Depot, obviously. It wearing the like same that. clothes. And I'm like, is Ryder's it that day here with again? Us today. Bear's here. Ryder's here with us today because he's not feeling that great, so he's hanging with us. Right? Yep. Did you get the nails? 18 gauge broad nails. So we're doing the trim in Savannah's living room and we're getting all the supplies at Home Depot. And I want to show you guys the brad nailer that we use because is because because I can't speak words are hard um it is the best invention in the whole entire world so this is the one okay this is the one that we use the ryobi airstrike it's a brad nailer we use 18 gauge nails and at home depot it is 129 and no cord runs on ryobi batteries so if you have other Ryobi tools, it's awesome. Or just get a Ryobi battery too. But it is literally amazing for doing trim work. It is pretty. This is the trim we're going to use on the horizontal part that separates the two boxes. And this is the one that we used. Nope. Nope. Yep. This one. This one? Yep. I showed the wrong one. Okay, see? Coming back is the worst. Another of extra, right? See to Kyle today. It's project day at our house. We get out the saw. He goes, "What are we doing with the saw?" And I said, "We're doing trim in boxes in the front room." What did he say? He, he just set up anything. the saw and he said just nothing. Set the saw and just kept on going. <laughs> kept on going. We made it back to Savannah's house and we got all the trim unloaded. And so now we have been marking off the chair rail part, which is we marked it at 36 inches. So we're gonna go all the way around with that thicker molding and then we'll use the thinner pieces to do the boxes above and below that. And so we just marked off all these walls, used a pencil and a level. And now we're gonna cut some. You have this nailer? Yep. Okay, we're gonna go yeah. cut a piece and then we'll show you how we nail it on. This saw is super handy because it has these like extension arms, so it holds it like pretty straight. Keep it, oh, oh, sorry. It. Hello. Teamwork. Okay, 92 and a quarter. You have a pencil mm -hmm. in your mouth. Always. Okay, great. So we are getting the first piece up. We hold it on our mark, which is right there. You can see it. So what are basically going to do is have Sav hold it, and then we drive one nail into. Wait, let's go down. down a little bit. We drive one nail into it, and then throw the level on because there's one. It kind of can act as like a teeter totter and like rock back and forth to be level. See how it can go up and down. So you drive one in the center, and then make sure it's level, and then you can drive the rest in. That looks really cute though. Okay, the first step is done. We got the chair rail, chair rail done. Talking is hard today, guys. We wrapped that one into the window a little bit because it's this bay window and over here. By the way, figuring out these corners is special. It was not easy, but done. So then we have that and then on this side, same thing, nice tight corners. So that's the last spot that we have to do it right here. And then we'll start the boxes that go on top and bottom. Oh, Savannah moved that. <laughs> it was right here in the last video. So that's where we are at. But it's so interesting because even just this part looks so pretty. Ryder, you snuck <laughs> up on me. <laughs> now that this chair rail is done, Mallory is drawing out the actual boxes and so she's doing that so that we can make sure that everything all the measurements make sense 
just using a level and drawing those squares out. We should be using a pencil, but we're using a pen. Got a pen. Yeah, no. It's gonna be fine. Gonna be okay, fine. Okay, so the trim's gonna go on the inside of this. So when there's casing here, there will be three inch gap here and a three inch gap here. This is gonna be this opening's gonna be cased out. That's it's gonna be cased just for. like these ones are. These ones just this one isn't done yet because we were we had to take it that part down for the kitchen remodel and it hasn't been done yet. It's gonna be done soon, hopefully. Okay, so quick tip. We have a few measurements that we're using really often, 41 and a half inches. So we went ahead and took a blue colored pencil, just any bright color that's different than the yellow and black. And we marked that so that when we're in a hurry, like getting the saw and making this measurement over and over and over, it's really quick to find. When the trim is all done, we will caulk and paint everything and make sure everything is nice and smooth. There aren't any gaps or anything like that. And then we're gonna paint it the wall color, which Savannah's house is a bare paint, but it's color matched to Sherwin-Williams. The color is called rhinestone and it is the perfect, super, super soft gray. It's almost white. Like if you look at any of her photos, it's very white, but hi, Lacey. But it's like a super light gray, which you can kind of see like the contrast between the super bright white and the gray but in all her photos, it looks really white. So it's like a cool white, almost gray. Okay, last piece. I'm gonna go around this weird electrical outlet. Last piece on this wall. Look how easy this Brad nailer is. It's like just a gun. It has a uh, battery on the back and a trigger. Great. Nice. Good Savannah just had to fix my hair, so if it's going crazy, you know why. Okay, this um, caulking is kind of, it's very uh, satisfying. It's one of my favorite finishing things to do. So we basically use paintable caulk. Make sure it's paintable, because I've made that mistake before, and try to paint over it, and it kind of beads up like you're painting on oil. So make sure it's paintable. And then we use this little gun guy, puncture the front, or cut off the tip, puncture it, and then load it into the gun. And then you basically put the tip in the corner, and load it and then run a bead all the way along whatever surface you're doing. So I like to do the long sides first and then you wanna pull this out a little bit. Sometimes they have a lever that releases it but if you don't, then it will just keep oozing out. So then I like to have this cup handy and I wet my fingertip we and then Oh, trim that one. I forgot. Okay, that's fine. Okay, but we run. So basically, I dip my finger in water and run it along this. And then I use whatever is left on my finger and fill, fill the near, nearby holes. And then I wipe them with a microfiber cloth. So it's all smooth and ready to paint once it dries. That's all. It's a great over tip. and over and over and over and over again. It's a great so tip. microfiber cloth and cup of water handy. That's my tip. Wait, good leggings. <laughs> it's flash all over shenanigans. Okay. I mean And I broke that tile. We painted a lot of this, like not the whole top, but a lot of this section. And the paint looks like not the same color. Like it looks a shade or two lighter. So I'm gonna go get a blow dryer and try and dry it and see like it looks like definitely not the original wall color but the paint is how old three years three years old which and still the walls should were be fine three years ago it should still be fine but it doesn't i mean that's not dry that's wet so it's hard to see so i'm gonna get the blow dryer real quick this is fine this is fun so that's wet and that's dry i think it's the right color is that the conclusion? I think so. I think we're golden. <laughs>